and this screen. There is no camera. You will not show up anywhere on YouTube. If you ask a question, it comes out on this like the grown-ups on Charlie Brown. And then I will repeat the question, not with your name, so you don't have to worry. All right. Now, sometimes I forget. And a kid might be getting in trouble and I forget to rec stop recording and then I say their name. But it's not like I use their whole name. I use John Quincy Adams Jason Fifth person. I don't do that. I might mention your first name. All right. I usually try to remember to stop the recording if you're, there's going to be discipline involved. Sometimes I forget. And amazingly, that, those videos get lots of views. Nobody watches the videos about math. But if I'm mad at somebody... The 300 views of that. Anyways, let us move along. So here we are on page 12, right? I want to make sure our pages are right at the beginning. Yes? Okay. We are going to be speaking of exponents. Now, for the most of today, if not all of today, this will be review. Okay? If we have time, we'll get to the one new thing we are going to add to grade 10. And it might not even be new depending on who your grade nine teacher was. Okay, let's go. Remember, I like to use real words, so we're going to discuss these things with real words. This is key. Repeated multiplication. Exponents are only for multiplying. So, and you are repeating the multiplication. What is this value? It is not 21. Some of you, over the course of this unit, are going to say, when I write a base and an exponent, you're going to say that base times the exponent. You're going to say this is 21. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to look at you like this. And you're going to be like, oh, oh no, oh, no, I don't mean that. But you will do it. It'll happen today. It's okay. Just don't make it a habit. This is, of course, what really? 343 is its evaluated answer. Simon, you were going to say 343? Ezra? It is 7 times 7 times 7, which equals 343. Now, we need to be aware that you need to be able to work in all of these forms. Okay? Most likely, you're not going to write that out. But understanding what that is will allow you to do all of the math in grade 10. Okay? That is exponential form. That's repeated multiplication form. That is evaluated form. I'm not going to write that down because it's not that important. Now I'm going to use some highlighting here to help our cause. 7 is the base. What is the base? In general terms. Very, very. The number that is being multiplied. That is what it actually is. Everybody understand? So, it is... Now, should we say number? Well, in this case, it's a number. But could I not do this? Okay. So, yeah, that's better. The value... Which is being multiplied... Easy peasy, right? Now, somebody often says here, and I'm sad nobody did because it ruins my gig. It's the big number. Well, come on, Abby. That's how we recognize where it is, yes? It's the big number. But again, what if it's not a number? Right? So we got to have another way to recognize the base. And we're going to talk about that after we talk about the exponent. Obviously, the exponent is 3. What is the exponent? Nobody say 3. What is it? Nino? The value is the base being multiplied by. Right. Well, the number of times we multiply. Right? The number of multiplications. <clears throat> where does the exponent live? It's a little number, right? Okay, 
So now that we've talked about which is which, this is key. The base is whatever is directly. Please underline, highlight, put a Mrs. Bad Crumble star or cloud around it. I don't care. Directly left of an exponent. Why do I say directly? For this. In this red term that I've drawn here, what is the base page? Just the x. So if we were going to write this out in repeated multiplication, like here, what would it look like? Edward? Edward? One more. One more thing is needed here. X times X times X times two. The two. So it would be two X times X times X. What is the base here? Two X. Two X. So what would this look like as repeated multiplication? Two X times two X times two X. Two X times two X times 2x. Everybody cool? The base is only what is attached to the exponent, unless there's brackets, because what is the purpose of brackets in math? To group stuff together. Everybody cool? All right. The whole thing is what we call a power. A power is a base and exponent. Now we always say, well, the power is three there. No, the power is seven third, seven to the third. So we read it as base to the exponent. Whatever it is, eight to the fifth, nine to the seventh, all right? There are two special names. What are they? There's two exponents to get a special name that we don't usually say base to the exponent. Does anybody know what they are? Edward? Squared and cubed. Anything to the two is squared. And anything to the three is cubed. Not cubaba cubed. Everybody cool? Now, I'm going to shut up for a while because you're already tired of listening to my voice, and I'm going to ask you to fill in this table. Here is what it would look like. We'll do the first one together. Two is the base. Four is the exponent. Two times two times two times two, and evaluated is 16. Everybody good? Paige. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to see if you can figure out based on the notes I just did. I'm going to show you the right answers in about a minute. Okay? Go. Now, most people should be approaching done. You might have a line or two that you're missing. That's okay. Javon, please do. Normally, I make you leave your phones, but... Because those are very expensive calculators, and I used to buy 30 calculators every year. I've been teaching for 20 years. I don't have any calculators. Why is that? All right. Check your work over. I'm going to let you digest it for a moment. Check the question you were going to ask, Abby, Paige, and Linda, who are all asking the same thing. And then I'll talk in a moment about some weird things that are happening here that maybe you made a mistake with or maybe you weren't quite sure about. I'm going to highlight lines that often cause, or spots that often cause problems. Already those two, that one, and this one. 
and even that one. Now, first of all, if you filled in a line, did you get them all right? That's on you to decide. If you didn't, you should put a little X by it and fill it in correctly now. Because this all should have been already in your heads. Well, in there somewhere. I'll take a moment, let you make sure you're all caught up. And then I'll talk about these problems. This line here. Why is the base 3 when there's clearly a negative in the front? Gervier. Right, because the negative is not in brackets, so the negative is not right beside an exponent. So I have to leave it until the very end. It's negative 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 again is 27, but there's a negative out in front, so it's negative 27. Why in the next line is the negative part of the base? It's in brackets. So the brackets have held all of this together, which means that negative has to repeat every time because it's part of the base. Everybody's good? Okay. Let's come down to this guy. The negative has to repeat. You can see the negative repeats, so the base had to be... Sorry for the interruption. At this time, the Joy Bikini go to the... Library conference room, as well as students with the last name M N N O grade nine. So that's M N N O. Last names, please go to the library conference center. Thank you. So this negative has to be included here, and negative times itself an odd number of times gets you a negative answer. Now this line is particularly problematic because of what I'm going to write over here. Negative 1 squared is what? No. Negative 1. Why? Because the negative isn't part of the base. What is negative 1 squared? That is positive 1. Everybody's cool still? Because the negative is part of the base. What is negative 1 cubed? Negative 1. What is negative 1 cubed? Negative 1. What is negative 1 to the fourth? Positive 1. Even numbered exponents, when the base is part, when the negative is part of the base, will always be positive. Everybody cool? And then the next problem was down here at 9. Because I could have done 3 and 2, 3 times 3, right? Or I could have done negative 3 and 2, negative 3 times negative 3 and gotten positive 9. And the third way I could have gotten it was 9 to the 1. 9 with no repeated multiplication, just 1, 9. And then down here, this is what I was talking about right here. The negative has an even exponent. So it should be a positive answer, yes? But there's a negative out in front, so that negative has to be brought to the end. Is everybody cool with the exponent basic rules? All of you should have done this in the ninth grade. You all should have done this with numbers in the ninth grade. A lot of teachers don't bother doing that line in the ninth grade. They don't bother with doing, using X as a base. Is there anybody in the room that didn't do this last year? So you've, done, you've only done exponents with numbers. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so this page is kind of review, but we're not going to have numbers anymore. We're going to use all letters here. Everybody okay? No difference, 
It's just a letter instead of seven to the third. It's X to the third. Everybody cool? Now, it's very important that we actually discuss what is happening mathematically here. I don't want you to tell me the shortcut that your teacher taught you last year when I asked these questions. Everybody cool? Multiplying powers of the same base. So, somebody give me a power with a variable base. Just say something. Variables are a letter. X to the power of three. Lovely. What's the base? What's the exponent? Excellent. Now we are going to multiply that by another power with the same base. So what letter do I have to put here? X. X. And any number here. Well, that's good. we're going to have to write too many. We're going to go squared. Okay. Now, if I say what the answer is here, you're all going to say X to the power of 5. And then I'm going to say Y. And you're all going to say because 3 plus 2 is 5. That's what you're all going to say, right? That's not what I want there. When I say why the answer is x to the fifth, I want to know mathematically what is happening. Mathematically, what is happening right there? So it's x times x times x, yes? Times. Times. Oops. What is happening there? x times x. How many x's are there? Five. It's been multiplied five times, so it is x to the fifth. Now, you might be saying to yourself, why the heck is he making me write that down when I know it's just three plus five? Because later in Math 10, when the questions look like this, like that, it's going to be real helpful for you to know what is actually going on. Okay? Oop, that's pre-calc 11. Silly me. Von 10 D. There we are. So everyone's cool, right? Now, now I will allow you to write your little cheaty rule x to the m times x to the n always equals x to the m plus n. Students with the last name m, n, and o, please go down to the library conference room. That's last names, grade 9, m, n, and o. Thank you. Your intelligent young people, multiply. We add the exponents. What's the opposite of multiply? So logically we should subtract the exponents. So x to the fourth. Now I don't want to do fourth. X to the fifth divided by x to the x squared. Now that little symbol doesn't get used a lot anymore, does it? That's what, like, grade three divided by when Mrs. Bag Crumble was teaching you that. That's how she wrote it. How do we write division now, Edward? As a fraction. This is, and what is in the numerator? The x to the fifth or the x to the two? x to the fifth over x squared. Now, of course, what does that really mean? That's what we're going to do. What it really means is this. Right? Now, what is x divided by x? One. One. What is x divided by x? One. What's one times one? What's one times x cubed? X cubed. So the answer is x cubed. This is what is really happening. You are canceling. Now, a great many of you say cancel, it just disappears. It does not disappear. It becomes one. And one multiplied by anything, we don't need to write it because it doesn't change the value. So what's our shortcut? X to the M divided by X to the N is X to the M minus N. And we all know this, yes? All right, let's go to the third one. Raising an exponent to an exponent. X squared 
cubed. What is the base here? This is very tricky, Paige. X squared is now a base, isn't it? Because... Sorry for the interruptions. Great nice to with the last name PQR. Please go down to the conference center. The last name is PQR. Thank you. So since Paige has rightly explained that the X squared is a base, X squared must repeat how many times? Thrice. Thrice. Which is a real word, don't make fun of me. And what is this really? What is that really? XX. XX. And what is that really? XX. XX. And what is that really? XX. XX, giving me X to the sixth. So what's the shortcut? X to the M to the N equals x to the m times n. Now, listen to me carefully. In grade 9, for the most part, you would apply one of these to a question, and you'd be done, right? Well, now, as you can see from that example I just showed you, you need to apply all of them all the time. All of these laws apply all the time even if it looks weird. So before I go on to the next ones, because these are the basic ones, just take a moment and use your brain. You don't need to write it down. What would X... No, I'm going to change letters because we've used X and Y. Just in your head. P to the third times P to the ninth. What's that in your head? P to the twelfth. Because you just added them, right? Okay. Two p cubed times p to the ninth. What would that be? I have two p to the twelfth. Do I have any other guesses? Nino? Okay. I have p to the fifteen. Any other guesses? Okay. Now, it is 2p to the 12th. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Knowing what is actually happening makes this easier to do. Because if, if you fall into f remembering shortcuts, you're in trouble. Because, of course, you see that these are the same base, yes? So they work together to get p to the 12th. And then it's all multiplied by 2. Everybody cool? Okay, so what would this one be? P cubed squared times, wait, over P to the fourth. P. I got a P squared, I got a P to the negative two. Any other guesses? Okay, two is correct, but it's not negative. And we're about to talk about that. Because this up here becomes p to the 6th. This down here is p to the 4th. 6 minus 4, 2. Everybody good? And lastly, 2p squared cubed times p to the 9th. What's that one going to be? I got 2p to the 15th. You know? You had another guess? Oh, okay. I just saw your hand move out of the corner of my eye. Do I have any other guesses? Does that look like that? I don't think it does. I think there's something different there, isn't there? What? What's different? Abby? Yes, it is 8p to the 15th. Because what is the base here? Two. The 2 is part of the base. Now let me ask you this. Is there anything here that by itself is confusing? Not really. But as we start stacking up this stuff, 
it gets a little ugh, which is why I like to make sure you are good with this middle part, what is actually happening. Because if you only remember the shortcuts and you pile, there's seven of these, you pile seven shortcuts on top of each other, ask any fairy tale character. You take seven shortcuts, the big bad wolf is getting you. Right? Stupid little red riding hood. You know, in the real story, the wolf eats her up, hey? Yeah. And the woodsman chops the wolf open into little bits and gets her out. And you know what really happens in Cinderella when the ugly stepsister's feet won't fit in the glass slipper? Yeah. The stepmother chops her kid's feet off up so they fit. No, he didn't cut her up. He cut the wolf up. I mean, but he cut the wolf up, but she came out. Yeah. I don't know. I don't read the the disgusting Grimm's fairy tales. I don't want any part of that. All right. This one always messes kids up, too, because everyone says, what's the answer? What is anything to the zero power? One. One. Every kid says that. Okay, so what's that? But you said anything to the zero power was one. Because there's a negative out in front. That's negative one. What's that? One. Positive one. Everybody cool? The answer, of course, to why it works is this. X cubed over X cubed. What should I do when I'm dividing the same base? Subtract. Subtract. So that's X to the 3 minus 3, yeah? Which would be X to the 0, Yes. But any time we have a fraction that's the same thing on the top and same thing on the bottom, what is it? One. It's one. So that's why this is always one. Everybody good? Now we start getting to stuff that maybe you didn't do in grade nine. So you want to pay pretty close attention here, okay? Two different bases. Two different bases. By the way, I know it seems we're going long. I'm giving you no work today. And you're not going to have any homework. So don't worry. How do I write two different bases in math class? Page? Sure. X. I'm not going to put any powers yet. X and Y. Two different bases, yes? Easy peasy, right? Now, they are raised to the same exponent. So what does this actually mean? What is the base of this whole expression? Right, this is x, y twice, yes? Can x and y work together? No, because they're different. So that is really x, x and y, y. And would a math person ever write that out? No, because math people are lazy. We use exponents. So what is this really? x squared, y squared. Everybody cool? So the shortcut, and I shouldn't have done that in red because I'm doing all my shortcuts in red. X, Y to the M is X, M, Y, M. The exponent goes to both. Now here's where it starts to get tricky because we're up to our fifth one of these now, yes? So if you're only memorizing shortcuts, it gets a little snaky. All the laws apply all the time. So what is x squared y cubed to the fourth? Abby? Yeah. X to the eighth, then y to the twelfth. Everybody understands y, right? Right? Okay, let's add another layer. x squared y cubed x squared to the fourth. What would you do with that? You had your shot, Gervier. X to the 16, y to the 12th. Why? Because he did this law first. 2 plus 2 to get the 4. Everybody cool? Okay. And then the hardest thing we've done so far... 2x cubed y squared to the third. What would that be? What's the base? 2x plus 3y plus 
Mm -hmm. So how many times would I need to write that? Three times. Three times. Does that two repeat three times? So what is the answer? Eight x to the power of twenty-seven. Oh, I mean, take the x to the power of nine. To nine and, and y to the six. Six. Is everybody cool with one through five? Page. Three times three is nine. Three times two is six. Where did you do three times three times three? It's two cubed. Two times two times two. That's cool. It's no problem. Everybody is good with these five? So now we start. Now this is probably going to be fairly new to everybody, but it's easy to figure out because we, you're good with the previous five. A fraction base, x over y, squared. What's that? What's the base? X over, x over y. So I got to write it twice. Math people wouldn't write that because they're lazy. So what is it? X over y squared. It's exactly like number five, right? The exponent just goes everywhere inside. Am I allowed to forget laws one, two, three, four, five when I'm at law six? No, I have to remember them. So first the shortcut, x over y to the m equals x m y m. But all of the other rules still apply. So what would this be? X to the power of four over y to the power of six. Can I go any further there? Can I do 4 minus 6? Some people are shaking their heads. Some people are nodding their heads. Arwen, why are you shaking your head? They're different bases, so I'm done. Everybody good with 1 through 6? All right. Now, you will notice I've given you almost a whole page for number 7, yes? Why do you think? There's a whole lot of crap going on with number seven. Now, how many of you with your grade nine teachers did negative exponents, meaning x to the negative seven? Four of you? Okay. We're going to explain this. It's going to take a while. It's going to finish the day. We may not even get done it, but we're not taking any math home. It's cool. Three cubed is what? It's 3 times 3 times 3, and it's 27, yes? Everyone agree? Of course you do. What's 3 squared? Nine. 3 times 3, which is 9. Everyone agree? As you drop down an exponent, what happens to the numbers that we are evaluating? Divide I divide by 3, whatever the base is, yes? So what's the next logical exponent? 1, 3 to the 1, which we know is 3, which we know is 3. I divide by 3 again, yes? What is the next logical exponent? 3 to the 0, which we know we can't write because we can't write 3 zero times. But we know that we're going to divide by 3 again. So what's this answer? 1. Everybody's comfortable to there, yes? What's the next logical exponent? 3 to the negative 1. We can't write that. There's no way to write it because it makes no sense, right? How do I write 3 negatively? So we can't write anything here, but we continue with the pattern. What is 1 divided by 3? No. No decimals in grade 10. It's 1 third. Right? Everyone agree? What's the next logical exponent? Now, you're smart... Young people, 3 to the 1 got me 3, which is really 3 over 1, isn't it? 3 to the negative 1 got me 1 over 3. What is the logical answer here? 
1 over 9, because I divide this by 3 again. What is the logical answer for 3 to the negative 3? Everybody cool? Everybody sees the pattern? So, x to the negative m is the same as 1 over x to the positive m. Now, you would think that would be all anyone would need to see, right? Like, for all the other ones, as soon as you see what I wrote in red, you can all do it, right? But negative exponents mess everybody up. This is where the problems start to happen. Because if I give it to you really simply, you have no problem doing it. What is x to the negative 2? It's the exact same as what I just wrote in red, ladies and gentlemen. 1 over, one over x to the positive 2. Oh. Oh, Everybody good? Yeah? Easy peasy, right? Okay. What's 2x to the negative 2? Where's the base there? X. Just the x. So is the 2 part of it? So it's 2, and then what does that become? 1 over x squared, right? 2 stays as the numerator, and we get that. Is everybody cool? Okay. Remember, can we forget any of our previous six laws? No. So what do you think that is? One over two x all squared, and then what would you do with that? That would be law three, wouldn't it? I've got an exponent to more than one base. So what is law three? So close. Four x squared. Everybody cool? Let's apply law six to one of these questions now. This is where it starts to screw everybody up. Because as of this question, there's more than one way to do it. And if you don't know what you're doing, you get confused. Because I might do it a different way than you, and then you think you're doing it wrong, but you're not. What are some options I could follow here? I've already told you exponent law 6 is in play. What was exponent law 6? What did it say? Where should that exponent go in this fraction? It should go to everything, yes? And according to exponent law 3, when it's going over brackets, what should it do? Multiply. So I would have x to the negative 4 over y to the negative 6, yes? Now, if this wasn't here... What's that? Because negative exponents make no sense, so we can't leave them in an answer. So this would be, the x to the 4 would go down here, right? And I'd have a 1 up top. Agreed? Okay. But if that x, we had y to the negative 6 down here, it's already in the denominator. So where should it go? Back up y to the positive 6. Now there's a lot of shortcuts here. If you know what you're doing. When I do these, as soon as I see a negative exponent, I just flip its base every time. But a lot of my students have trouble with that step. So I say, well, why don't you just distribute that in and figure it out from there. 
So let's remember that we're done and you have no homework and we'll see you tomorrow to practice applying this stuff.